And I want to get started because some of our guests have to leave a little early, so if you'll forgive me, I'm going to get the show on the road. Okay, my name is Murray Rankin and I'm the Member of Parliament for Victoria. I'm honoured that you came today. I'm thrilled on a sunny day to see so many people. It doesn't surprise me given the nature of what we're going to be discussing, the housing crisis in our community. Let me first start by acknowledging that, of course, we are meeting on the Lekwungen people's territory, those that are currently represented as the Esquimalt and uh, the Songhees nations. And I'd like to also say to you how grateful I am that you all showed up today. And uh, I'm looking forward to our dialogue. That, of course, is what this is really about. Um, I should tell you that I have uh, some elected officials in the audience I'd like to acknowledge. I see the new mayor of Saanich. Mr. Fred Haynes, who's here. And I thought I saw Zach DeVries, and I, I certainly see Ned Taylor. Is Zach here? Zach will be here imminently. Zach is coming imminently. So it's great to see you here, Ned. I really appreciate one of the youngest uh, elected representatives in our region. Gives us hope for the future. Are there any other elected folks that I failed to acknowledge? Uh, well, I just, it's, the, it's just wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. Um, what I'm going to suggest is the outline of the afternoon. First of all, uh, I'm going to introduce all at once the speakers, a couple of whom have to leave a little early, so I want to make sure we get their remarks on the table before they have to do so. And then I'm, I'm going to open it up for dialogue. We have a roving mic. Uh, I think if you put your hand up, you'll see this lady here. That's Crystal Thompson. She will come around and bring a mic to you if you uh, have mobility issues, you just don't feel like getting up, she'll bring it to you. Um, I should also tell you some practical things, such as cookies, coffee, and water are available at the back of the room. Don't hesitate to get up and, and get it throughout the proceedings. Bathrooms, that's an important event to tell you about. Bathrooms are over here, just through this door over here, and I've been told to tell you that there are tables at both ends of the area where the bathrooms are to cordon you off into that area. If you go beyond those tables, alarms will ring, and all hell will break loose. So I'm just putting you on notice. If you go by that table and the alarms ring, it's your fault that this proceeding ends at that point in time. Anyway, again, um, let me just, if I could, start by introducing our, our panelists. Everybody knows that the housing crisis is a federal, provincial, capital, regional, and municipal issue. It all requires, any solution is going to require all of us and all of those government levels to cooperate. So I've tried to provide uh, that kind of a representation for us today. So let me start with the person who's on my right, your left, Rob Fleming, the Honorable Rob Fleming, who of course is today the Minister of Education. This community office is just across the way because he's the member of the legislature for Victoria Swan Lake. And Rob has been a city councillor. We're, we're in his riding right now, so you have to be particularly nice to him. But we're also in the city of Victoria, and we have the mayor of the city of Victoria, Lisa Helps. Fresh after being re-elected as mayor, she has, of course, served as a councillor before. She brings a business perspective to her job, as well as a, a, the community values that I think uh, she exemplifies, and we're delighted uh, with her leadership on issues of housing. I'm going to mention that in a moment as well, specifically. I have as well, uh, on the far, on the far um, left for me, right for you, Marika Albert, who you, many of you know. I first knew Marika when she was the executive director of the Community Social Planning Council of uh, Greater Victoria, but then she went on to bigger and better things, left us for the Lower Mainland, and now is the policy director for the BC Nonprofit Housing Association, and an honorary uh, citizen of the City of Victoria. Honorary citizen of the City of Victoria for her, her amazing work, which you'll hear all about in a moment. And last but certainly not least is Christina Cullum, who's the Senior Manager of the Capital Regional Housing Corporation and has 25 years at the municipal and regional level and is responsible for something that delighted, I hope she'll talk a, uh, a little bit about, which is the Regional Housing First Program. Give you a chance. Thank you very much. We're going to have some short politicians. 
short, short uh, presentations from politicians, longer setting the stage presentation from these folks who have, let's say they know what they're talking about pretty well, and uh, not to say these people don't, but their, their presentation will be more of a, of a, of a slideshow that I think gets uh, set the stage for our discussion. You know, speaking of the, um, of the program, the Capital Regional uh, uh, Housing First program, I get to tell a little bit of a story about the need to cooperate. I had Ben Isaac, Councillor Isaac, to come to me with a spark of an idea several years ago where he said, you know, we've got this homelessness problem and we have this thing that I hadn't even frankly heard of called the Capital Regional Hospital District. And his idea was to say maybe we could use that responsibility of the Capital Regional District to somehow connect the dots to the homelessness crisis. And that spark led to a meeting with the then chair of the CRD, Niels Jensen. And then, to her credit, uh, on her, at wearing her CRD hat, uh, Mayor Helps was involved in getting that idea through the CRD such that we ended up with the $19 million that's behind the program that you'll hear about in just, in just a minute. Because that involved $30 million from the CRD, $30 million from the BC Housing, the provincial government, and $30 million from the federal government. Federal government said to me, oh Marie, we never give money to the pro to, to these kind of things. We only give money to the the provincial housing authorities. But this Minister Duclos, we kept hammering him. I think it's fair to say that's the right word. And we managed to do something that has lovingly, lovingly hammering him. <laughs> and we managed to get $90 million very creatively into this region. And I do really like it. Far be it for me to set the stage and tell you what you already know, but I would like to put a few facts on the table before we proceed. We have a spectrum of housing that constitutes, I think, the crisis before us. We have those who can't afford to own a house, we have those who can't afford to rent a house, and those who can't find any kind of accommodation at all, or couch surfing and, and uh, uh, house uh, are homeless entirely. I, I read a statistic that will give you some of the uh, at the ownership level, some concept of just how serious the problem is. Between uh, the years 20, 2000 and 2016, the total median income for a family living in Victoria went up by 64%. In that period, the cost of buying a single family home in Victoria went up 380%. That means that for a lot of people, there's simply no way that they can afford a house. And I hear millennials talking about that. I hear people who are trying to establish businesses in this community. People can't afford to live here, or at least to buy a house. What about renters? It's even worse. Victoria's vacancy rate remains below 1%. Housing is typically defined as affordable when the cost of rent and utilities doesn't exceed 30% of your household income. Well, that means 44% of renters in the Capital Regional District can't afford uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to rent here. And renters spending more than half of their, of their total before tax income face critical affordability issues. Uh, and that's the case for one in five people in the region. And of course, we all know about the homelessness crisis as well. Now, cuts to government programs didn't just start in the last while. In 1984, under Brian Mulroney's Conservative government, that happened. But it, the big turning point was in 1993, something that I didn't know about until recently. Paul Martin's Liberal government cancelled the National Affordable Housing Program. Had they not done so, there would have been half a million more units of affordable housing across Canada, and 100,000 units would have been built by now in our province of British Columbia. So those cuts have had an enormous consequence. People, the federal government getting out of that social housing business is something I know we're going to be talking about today. The national housing strategy the government of Canada has launched uh, is obviously welcome, but it's fully 90, that's 90% of that spending will not occur until after the next election, which of course doesn't do much for those of us in communities across the country that are, that are facing the tenacity of homelessness and unaffordable housing. So, what can we do about it? That is why we're here, to have a conversation as a community about it, and to hear from those levels of government and the nonprofit sector that are trying to do something about it. So, having said that, I'd like to turn it over first then to Rob Fleming. Thank you very much uh, for having me here today, uh, Murray, and for that kind introduction. 
convention. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to see uh, folks out here on Saturday afternoon to discuss uh, what is probably the most pressing and most discussed issue uh, at every dinner table, particularly on a long weekend like this, um, and that is around housing affordability uh, in all of its dimensions. And uh, I think what I would like to start is just to, to present some information that will be uh, undoubtedly not new to anyone here, but to think about what the many faces of the homelessness crisis uh, to begin with, and that's just one aspect of the housing crisis we face uh, in uh, Greater Victoria uh, is part of. Um, we're in the grips of an opioid crisis uh, in this province, uh, in Western Canada, uh, on the continent of North America that uh, affects homeless people disproportionately and is costing people on a daily basis uh, their lives. We have a, an addictions um, strategy that our government and the ministry specifically designated to come up with an action plan uh, uh, for that population in an effort to turn the tide uh, on those who are losing their lives. But housing insecurity uh, plays a major portion in why we're losing that battle of housing. Um, another is around uh, Moms and children fleeing uh, domestic violence or family breakdowns uh, who cannot get into a shelter, let alone some kind of permanent housing uh, situation. Uh, in part, some of it goes to the responsibility that uh, Murray Rankin talked about. You know, the fact that since 1993, Canada as a country, alone in the G8, by the way, has scaled down their overall housing investments, in part because the provincial government has not used the levers and the crown agencies that we've traditionally uh, used to build uh, housing for all kinds of populations. Uh, BC Housing and the network of nonprofits that we have in British Columbia, and that's been a 16-year trend. So when, when I think of, uh, in my own constituency of Victoria Swan Lake, the last time any nonprofit, uh, below market housing was built for families, it was 2000, 2001. That's the last time a project of that type, uh, in that case, uh, Capital Regional District Housing supported by provincial funds, uh, opened new doors. So we have had the same uh, supply of nonprofit affordable housing in this constituency and other parts of the South Island for 16 uh, long years. And um, while this crisis has been on the slow burn for a long time and affected more and more people, I have to say, a few years ago, it became even more acutely um, apparent. And one of the things that I was noticing in my constituency office was the number of people uh, whose lives were in, uh, in some uh, measure of chaos uh, because they were facing a, a rising trend of rent evictions. I think Vancouver Island started to see offshore and lower mainland investment come in and purely for profit-making activity purposes buy up a lot of apartment buildings and make their business case on throwing people out on the streets and jacking up rents. And unfortunately at that time, and this is just going back to 2016, the law was on their side. They were able to do that very, very easily. And a lot of those people that were kicked to the curb were senior citizens. And a lot of them ended up sleeping in their, in their cars, doing anything they could to survive. They had nowhere else to turn. Uh, that was a wake up sign, I think, uh, just a few years ago of how the escalation of the crisis was manifesting itself in different ways and becoming worse. Um, and so we have uh, had 16 months of a new government that believes uh, government and the nonprofit sector uh, has a role to play in addressing the lack of homes and lack of suitable housing uh, uh, for British Columbians. Uh, I'm one member uh, here on the South Island that uh, knows this is the number one issue for my constituents, I'm joined by people like Carol James, Lana Poppin, Don Horgan, uh, Adam Olson, and others. Um, and, uh, and, and so our response has to take into account a number of things. One, we have to build more units. And we need to find and raise revenues to be able to do that. And uh, we are doing that as a government. Uh, the other is we have to change laws to make them more fair. The laws that advantage uh, those who would renovate and kick out all of their tenants and raise the cost of rents as this so dramatically did go up over the last couple of years. That is over. The law is fixed, and I'm very pleased that we were able to introduce uh, balanced legislation that uh, will not allow that anymore. Uh, or if it does, I know that my colleagues here will 
speak of the uh, importance of innovative partnerships. And uh, I, I want to credit uh, the, uh, the Housing Minister of British Columbia, Selena Robinson, um, who sends her best regards and, by the way, says, stay tuned for some announcements next week in the Calgary Region District. But for her to reach out to the Anglican Church, the United Church, the Presbyterian Church, some of the institutions on Vancouver Island that have a property portfolio that they can no longer manage or congregations of any size that justifies that and to have a conversation with the government instead of just disposing of those properties as they were doing, see whether we can make those opportunities to build all types of housing in our community that will help people live here, live here affordably. Uh, and so we have a plan that has 30 points to it. We have targeted uh, $7 billion over the next decade towards building housing of all types. One of the announcements I can partially scoop will deal with the absolute lack of residential uh, student housing at institutions like UVic that pushes kids to come here to study into the already tight uh, rental market that we have in the capital region. It's the most unhealthy rental market in Canada, by the way, worse than Toronto, worse than Vancouver. Uh, so it's a multi-pronged plan to build different types of housing that are affordable uh, for young people, affordable for families, affordable for seniors. And we have a lot of opportunities out there. I think of um, the Oak Bay Kiwanis Pavilion Society on Cook Street. They have tried to get the attention of a government, a provincial government, for 12 years. They've had a redevelopment idea on, on, on that site. And, uh, and so when I look at the land base around Victoria Swan Lake and Greater Victoria, there's lots of opportunities here. Um, we can solve this crisis and go a long way to alleviating uh, the housing insecurity that people feel in the capital region when all three levels of government work together. I know that Murray Rankin does a fantastic job in Ottawa, uh, praising when required, <coughs> prodding when it's often required, uh, the federal government to release some of the funds that they have um, offered to the people of Canada in, 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 the, in a recent budget most of which is back end loaded, unfortunately, to the years 2027 and 2028. The time to build housing is now. The challenges are great. Yes, we have rising construction costs. Yes, we have trade shortages. Yes, we have a nut bar in the White House who's uh, put tariffs and, and on steel and, and, and aluminum, all of those things. But we finally have municipal governments that are progressive and dedicated to solving this crisis. A provincial government whose attention is entirely devoted uh, to helping uh, alleviate the housing crisis and the affordability crisis more generally. I'm so proud that this week we began to unveil uh, child care spaces in British Columbia that cost working families $200 a month instead of $1,200 a month. I'm very proud that our government has brought in the largest tax cut that low income and middle income families in British Columbia have ever experienced. We got rid of the regressive MSP tax, the health care tax, that hit working families, 1800 bucks a year, back into the families, into the pockets of families who live in Victoria Swan. I'm very proud of that. And I'm very proud that our government is now on a pathway to finally have a minimum wage that makes much more sense at 15 bucks an hour. So we see who, thank you. <laughs> our government is, is, is looking at uh, how, to, how to advance its work over at every turn, it's impossible to do housing. Um, I, I have to take my hat off to Carol James, who is a tough, no-nonsense finance minister who uh, I think has rightfully uh, listened to Mayor Helps and others, uh, brought the foreign buyers tax into the capital region. We shouldn't have been excluded in the first place, perhaps. Uh, looked at the speculation tax that will discourage uh, some distortions in the market and uh, brought in a foreign buyers tax that I think uh, will hopefully uh, shape home building construction towards uh, the affordable end of the market, uh, start building the kinds of family housing that we need in the capital region and other parts of Victoria. So it all goes hand in hand, uh, but things happen when we have when the stars start to align with the progressive municipal, provincial, and uh, when Murray's done a progressive federal government uh, to help with the housing crisis. So thank you very much. Great, thanks Marie for inviting me. I can't tell all of you how relieved I am that this is not an all-candidates debate. <laughs> <laughs> so 
first time I've been on stage in public since, since I was sitting through those. Uh, this is much more exciting because, as you've heard from Murray uh, and Rob, we're really all in this together. There is no better time in this region, not only in Victoria, but Mayor Haynes is here from Saanich, no better time in this region to advance and make real progress on the issue of affordability as there is now. And that's a good thing because, as you've heard and as you're all aware, it's urgent. It's beyond urgent. Um, I'll just start um, emphasizing some of the things that Murray and Rob have said and then talk a little bit about what I see as the local government's responsibility. So I just want to put um, the, the numbers that Murray gave to you uh, about the, um, the 1993 cuts by the Liberal government into a little bit more context. Um, when, uh, before those cuts were made, the federal government was spending uh, $114 per Canadian on affordable housing. $114 per Canadian. By 2014, that amount was reduced to $58 per Canadian, even though the population of Canada grew by 30% during that period. So we literally see the results of that cutback, those cutbacks on our streets. We literally see that. And you know, it's all fine and good to look back and point fingers, but I think it's really important to realize why we are in this crisis. It's not because city council didn't do something last week, uh, it's not because Rob and his government didn't do something last month. It's because of historical neglect at both the federal and provincial governments of housing. That is why we're in this crisis. And the bad news, I guess, even though there's all of this alignment right now, is it's not going to take four years or eight years to fix 30 years and 16 years of neglect. It's going to take a long time. Having said that, with the alignment that we have right now, the regional, municipal, provincial, and federal governments, I think we can make significant process, progress, rather, and process, but progress in the next four years and hopefully longer in that, in both cases. Um, I'm just giving myself four years because this is my last term as mayor and I want to do everything that we can with this fantastic new council I have to pull all the levers that we can to make Victoria more affordable. As Rob alluded to, affordability is more than just housing. If you have affordable housing but you're paying a lot of money in childcare, or you're paying a lot of money in transportation costs, or you're paying a lot of money in food, life doesn't get more affordable. It does on the housing front, which is a significant cost driver, but we really have to tackle housing affordability, childcare affordability, transportation affordability, and food affordability. So I can't tell you how delighted I was to see the announcement yesterday about the $200 per month for childcare. And I know this is a pilot project, but I think if this goes well, and this can be rolled out across the province, that's a significant savings to families with kids. The other thing that we're looking at, or I'm looking at, and I hope my colleagues will agree, is to look at transportation costs, again, particularly for families with kids. So right now, if you're a parent and you've got one kid and they need to buy a bus pass, $540 per year. It doesn't seem like much, but if you've got two kids, it's $10,080 per year. And so my proposal is that, what's that? $1,008. Oh, $1,008, sorry, did I say $10,000? Yeah, well, right, thank you. Yeah, I have, I've got $1,000, it's a lot of us. So, yes, $1,008. So if we can, as a municipal government, work to make transit free, for kids in Victoria, 18 years and younger, that literally puts money back into the first time. Now, I'm not going to tell you today the uh, way that I propose to fund this, because I need to give it a bit more thought. It's going to be relatively controversial. But the... Um, <laughs> you'll like it, probably, but whatever you know. The, uh, the point is that more affordable childcare, more affordable transportation, also makes housing more affordable, makes food more affordable, makes ballet lessons and piano lessons, and all those other things that we need to live good lives more affordable. So housing is absolutely important, and that's why we're here today, but I just really want to plant the seed that we need to look comprehensively at affordability. Um, so what are we going to do in Victoria? Well, I think you can see we're already taking action, even coming out of the first council meeting. Um, I do want to talk first about this $90 million regional housing first program because it is extraordinary. 